Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and a new video on the Mark 1 Golf GTI Classic. I know so many of you have been itching to see another video on this car. In the background, we have been doing quite a lot of searching for parts and bits and pieces for the car just to try and recommission it and get it back on the road. And as you can see by the bonnet, we have got lots and lots of new parts. And that is why I want to mention today a Heritage Parts Centre who have hooked us up with all of this stuff. We started searching online for some of these parts. I stumbled across their website and their knowledge is invaluable. They're, it's run by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. And they have hooked us up with these SSP coilover suspension. And this is the suspension that they recommended for this car. So their knowledge is, was key really because we've managed to get the correct bits that people fit to these cars that work best for these cars. They've also hooked us up with full front braking system. So discs, pads, the fitting kit, new rear drums, brake shoes, new wheel cylinders. We've got the fitting kits. And of course, thank you for the t-shirt. Guys, if you haven't, if you don't know about Heritage Parts Centre, they are a classic Volkswagen and Porsche specialist based in West Sussex. They've, we've linked up with them for this build and we really do appreciate it. So thank you to Heritage Classic Parts. Guys, head on over to their website. I'm gonna link it in the description down below. I'm also gonna pin it in the comment section. And if you go on their website and you do order anything, use uh, salvage on checkout to get a 10% discount on your order. We want to say a massive thank you again to the Heritage Parts Centre for linking up with us on this build. Thank you very much. Let's get on and start work on this beautiful little car and get some of these new parts fitted. I can't wait. Just as I got in here to start disconnecting this secondary fuel pump, it just reminded me massive thank you to everybody again in the comment section that told us about this second fuel pump because like i said in the other video we genuinely didn't know and it just reminded me guys look how bad that is it just reminded me just jumping in here the new fuel pumps here so we will be getting that rebuilt as soon as i jumped in there chris has come around here and he's going to start you can't really see a great deal there. Mind. Yeah, if you don't mind, buddy, that'd be lovely. Um, spraying up all the bolts on the top of the shocks because we're going to need to obviously move that axle down. It'll be really nice to make sure that they're all loose while we get it up on the ramp. It does look reasonably good in here. It's the first time I've ever looked in here, but I can't actually see any bad rust. Oh, no, it's in quite nice condition, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it looks good, doesn't it? Shame about those six by nines in that parcel shelf. Wrecked it. Yeah, they have wrecked it. So yeah, Chris crack on do that and get it up in the air. You know, we was just going to get cracking there and start stripping it all out. And I said to Chris, before we do, I'm just going to quickly show you guys underneath it because we hadn't actually seen it either. It's a, I'll follow you around with that torch, Chris, after you've done Sorry. that. First, right? No, it's fine, mate. It's fine. I'm quite shocked. It's actually a very, very solid car. There's no grot or rot under here anywhere. Chris is just spraying up all the bolts before we remove that tank, just to make life a little bit easier. But 
Check that out. It's actually in really, really nice condition underneath here. You can see now how fiddly that fuel pump was for us to fit from underneath the car. But Chris just looked up there and said, you can just about see that rusty pipe there, just to the left of the fuel pump. I said, if you sprayed that, he said, no, it's actually leaking. And we never noticed. And the fuel tank, as you can see there, is rotten. And that is also the other filter that I was talking about previously on the other video that we couldn't get to and couldn't get undone. So we can get to that now. But look at those floors. Doesn't look like it's ever been over anything. And it doesn't look like it's ever had any welding done either. So quite chuffed there, really. A little bit of surface rust on all of the front components, like the suspension legs and lower arms. Apart from that, very, very chuffed. When you look in there like that, it really does show how long it has been sat for, all the cobwebs in there. And uh, in the boot as well, very, very nice. Didn't expect it to be that nice inside the boot area. So quite chuffed so far. Chris moves straight on to the filler neck. Let's try and get that tank out. Quite a lot of work to do there on that little bit of time lapse. Everything, things like this bit here, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to get my glove on before I show you. What would we call this? Another filter. It's, filter, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, another yeah. filter. And that's the one we was talking about. And that don't look like that's ever been off the car. It is in a bit of a state. So Chris just kept going around WDing things up, but he was WD40 in it winding them out a little bit and then leaving them and WDing them up again. We're gonna try and get the, the fuel tanks all loose now and we've got everything disconnected. So what we're gonna try and do is just swivel this axle down a little bit, just so that we can manoeuvre the tank out without taking the axle right off, disconnecting all the brake lines. There is a good chance that we might have to do that. But of course, we wanna try and do it the easiest possible way and so show you guys and we don't want to time lapse taking the back axle off i think we'll get a, a gist of what i'm saying now go on mate yeah. so that's the last bolt that's isn't it last one. so we should be able to go up slowly it, this is what we're hoping go up the axle stays on that stand and we get enough maneuverability there to actually get the fuel tank out so up you go a little bit yeah Yep. Yep. Just the brake, flexi brake pipes, isn't it? Brake hoses. They're loose. Then what did you talk about? No, that's the handbrake. The flexi brake hose, as long as that don't go tight. Mode it. Mode it. I got the loads on that one. Right. And you got quite a bit on that one as well, yeah. Right. That's as far as it's going to go. What's holding it? You might have to crack the... Oh, it's the bracket on the leg here. So you've got a bar. Yeah. That's it. It's on the other side probably. It? it is, mate, yeah. It's got to drop off that stuff. It has, it? yeah. It's in. It's off of it, just uh, that's it, that's it. Right, well, it is off, but it's back on the stand, yeah. So. Well, we're right on the end of the flexes now, can't go any more. Right, so we've got to be able to get the tank out of there, out of that way. Yes, it's exhaust, isn't it? It's whether it's gonna. 
there's definitely not enough room to get it out the back there, is there? No, Can you get that side to drop down it a bit? It'd go past the beam, it won't go past the exhaust. Alright, okay. Uh, this would really come. Yeah, What's again, holding, it? It? holding it up your side there? Doesn't taste that. very nice that petrol, does it? No. It's just hooked on that bracket. I think it just needs to go forward. It's on that. Um, no, no, that's the floor. Plate, that's it. I think it's just hooked. Yeah. It's just hooked on that bracket. The pump. Oh, so yeah. Right, guys, we're not going to be able to film that live, but if you can see, that has actually come down quite a lot there, but the exhaust is not going to allow the tank to come down enough and for us to slide it out because the front end is actually a bit deeper than this back end, but there's quite a lot of room around it there, you can see. And the floor looks nice underneath it. So we'll concentrate on getting some more bits out of the way. So guys, there's, um, well, there's not really any two ways about it. We was pretty much fighting and losing battle there, no matter what we'd done. The axle did have to, in the end, we had to drop it right down on some rope. So I would recommend anybody doing this job, don't try and do it the way we done it. Removing that axle is actually essential to this job, Chris, isn't it? It needs doing. So we, anyway, we eventually got it out of there. And when we put that new one in, we're gonna drop that axle right out of the way. So fuel filler neck, again, everybody reached out and said about it, they really suffer. And of course, you're absolutely correct. And as you can see, it's toast. So the fuel tank itself, I did just try a little bit before I cut in actually to show you. No matter how much we clean this out, I think, and how many filters you went through, guys, I think you would agree, we would have just been fighting and losing battle every time. I'm going to try and manoeuvre it around the whole tank. And you can actually see, I've got to be careful not to turn the camera up the wrong way. But yeah, absolutely knackered that fuel tank. So that was the best thing for it. Let's move on. So that tank is actually on back order, but we're not going to let that stop us today. The axle needs refurbing and rebuilding. And again, you know, now Heritage have hooked us up with all of those parts. Chris just said, I'm going to crack on, Rob, and get this axle done. You concentrate on the back suspension. He's already stripped off the drums, all of the brakes, and we're going to be getting this cleaned right up. I've hung off it with a jet wash and got all of the major crud off of it but we're actually going to take that into the paint booth spray it up chris has just made up two nice new brake lines for it and i have been busy if i just show you guys i've got the g101 there and a rag i just spent 10 minutes cleaning it up literally 10 minutes just giving that a wipe because it started to run I still had the shock in there, so I haven't done just up there yet, but look how nice that's come up. There's no rot or rust in there, apart from a little tiny bit there, but really, really happy. And just as a comparison, that's what that one's come up like. But that is actually how it looked. That's a big difference, isn't it? I've left the shock in there as well, and what I've done was place the old one out here on a piece of cardboard with that new one. How nice is that gonna look? Thank you again, Heritage Parts, for hooking us up with this. I can't wait to get it all on there and see what it looks like. Let's get this back axle refurbished and I'm gonna continue getting underneath this wheel arch looking as mint as I can. Guys, 
guys, Chris was just saying, Rob, we can't put all, all that brand new stuff on that old axle. I've dropped it straight round McNeely Brown, round the corner, powder coating. The man is round there now blasting the axle and he said, pick it up 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, all powder coated, brilliant. We got involved, we really did get involved with that axle being done. You would have seen me clean this up under here and it actually looks, I think you would agree, it's come up really well. But again, we just got carried away and thought, it, it wants to be mint really, well as mint as we can get it. So I've just whipped round, grabbed a couple of cans of white stone chip, Chris has masked it up. We're actually gonna, we're gonna re-stone chip these under here just so that they look really, really nice. Looks very white, Chris, doesn't it? It does, very white. That will dull down though. All these little things really do make a difference. Look how nice that's going to look with all that new stuff under there. Sorry, mate. Mm -hmm. Trying to get that moment, aren't I, where I'm videoing and getting right in your way. We'll show you once it's done. We let those dry overnight and we've just chucked those shocks in. How much nicer does that look? I'm so chuffed with it. It really does look incredible. And the other side, as you can see, is hanging down there. I can't wait to go and get that axle now, build it all back up and actually get that fitted on the car. But that just looks amazing. All these adjustments we'll sort out right at the end once all four corners are on and then we can set them all up so that they're correct. But what a difference, that little bit of extra work just to clean it out and go over it again, looks amazing. So Chris is in the background getting the brake drums, brake shoes, getting everything ready. I've just whipped round and picked up, picked up this rear beam. I can't stop laughing. I think we might have gone a little bit over the top. No, definitely not. Look how lovely that's come out. What a difference. It's just gonna make so much more of a nicer job of it. We're chuffed to bits. Let's get that fitted and get all those brakes on there. Guys, check that out. How good does that look? Just looks incredible. We're gonna concentrate on building this side up, getting the new brake shoes and that in there. And then, uh, then we can move on to the other side, but it looks beautiful, doesn't it? Let's move on. Check that out. All new brake shoes, new springs, new wheel cylinders, those nice new brake pipes that Chris made up. And you can see we put all nice new bolts in there as well. It just looks so, so nice. Once again, a massive, massive thank you to Heritage Parts Centre for hooking us up with all of this stuff. I mean, we're really, really glad we did it now. Guys, if you do need anything for a classic Porsche or Volkswagen, check them out. The link is in the description. And for those of you that don't know the description, there's a little arrow next to the title. Click that down. That drops down the description and the link will be in there. I'll also pin it in the post. But don't forget as well, on checkout, use the discount code SELVAGE to get 10% off. Guys, let me know what you think of this in the comment section down below. I'm going to get Chris to just put that brake drum on there, just so that you can kind of see it finished. We've got all new wheel bearings as well going in there. Look how nice that looks. It, it just looks like a completely different car. The axle, when I went and picked that up this morning, I forgot to mention actually... That had just come out the oven when I turned up to collect it. And when I actually picked it up to carry it to the van, it was all still very, very warm. But let us know in the comment section what you think about that. That was the right choice, right? Having that powder coated, that's just going to last a very, very long time now. It just looks so different under there. I can't wait to get the rest of it back together. We're now going to move on to the other I'm side. I'm sure quite a lot of you will appreciate two of us can't work on one hub at a time. So Chris is doing that other hub and I thought I'd just come out here and just pick up again on the fuel tank. Unfortunately, because that is on back order, there's nothing we can actually do until that comes in. As soon as that does come in, we'll get that fitted and then we can start moving on 
to the front end. I know I did mention earlier in the video as well about the second filter underneath. My bad, it's actually a fuel accumulator. But yeah, basically we're just waiting on that tank and then we can actually finish off the back end of the car. So that's that side all back together, guys. I know quite a lot of you reached out about these wheels and said you need the proper BBSs, but do you know what? I really, really do like these wheels and Chris likes them as well. And they're kind of that era. They are the correct wheels. I'm going to try and pronounce that. Sorry, guys. We're not... Fitter Powdy. Fitter... We're not dyslexic. I am. Oh, Fitter Powdy. Now, uh, he was a racing driver. These are quite a good brand. We would love some centre caps for these wheels. So if any of you guys know where we can get them, or if you've got them, we would really, really appreciate it. Sorry, guys. So, yeah. That is all we're going to have time for in this episode today, which is a bit of a shame. We would have liked to have got a lot more done, especially that fuel tank, because that would have been awesome to get that in there and get it flicked up, running on that key, perfect each time. But let us know what you think in the comments section down below about what we've done. We did get carried away, but I said to Chris, you know what, it, it wants doing. Now we've come this far with it, and they hooked us up with all those bits, Heritage. We just wanted to continue on, get the brake pipes done, get all the wheel bearings in there. And we're, that is going to be one lovely little car when it is finished. So I'm not going to go on any longer. If you did enjoy today's video, please do give us a thumbs up. We really do appreciate it, and it shows your appreciation. Like, subscribe, and share. Check out all the links in the description down below, and we'll see you very, very soon in the next one.